Have you ever heard of Greasy Grace, or maybe it's been called Easy Believism? It's this temptation to believe that if something's hard, it can't be God. But what we're going to learn today as we wrap up our Restored to Health mini-series in Psalm 126 is that the hard work is actually a part of the restoration process. I'm so glad you're with me as we wrap up this mini-series. It's been an awesome look at Psalm 126. This is the Reluctant Leader Podcast. I am Paul Jenkins, and it's episode 39. Y'all, let's jump into the end of Psalm 126. Here we go. It's a beautiful April morning. It's um, a little bit warm here where I am. The birds are chirping. I don't know if you can hear them in the background or not. And it's the week after we celebrated the resurrection of Jesus, which is an appropriate time to finish up our Restored to Health miniseries. We've been looking at Psalm 126. And so I just want to read the whole psalm for you one more time. And then we're going to focus today on the last two verses of the psalm. It starts off in verse 1. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, or what we've learned is when the captives were brought back, right? When the Lord brought back the captives to Zion, we were like those who dreamed. I've mentioned this to you before in the Hebrew. It's better phrased, we were like those restored to health. That's where our title for this miniseries has come from. When the Lord restored the captives to Zion, we were like those restored to health. Verse 2, our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. And then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. Restore our fortunes, restore our captives, Lord, like streams in the Negev. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. Now, we've talked a lot in this mini-series about what we have when when we've been restored to health. It says in verse 2 that they had laughter, that they had joy, that they had a testimony among the nations. And not only did they have a testimony among the nations, but verse 3 says that they agreed with the testimony that the nations were saying about them. So they also had integrity, right? And in the last half, we've, we've been talking about how even though we're restored to health, there's still work for us to do. There are still things that we need to do to live the restored to health life. The, the analogy that I've used so much through this mini series is it's like one thing to go to a doctor and he says, hey, you've got a heart condition and you go have surgery and in surgery, he heals your heart. He restores your heart to health. But then when that surgery is over, you know, he's going to tell you or she's going to tell you there are things you need to now do. There are things you need to change in your life. There, your perspective has shifted because you've been restored to health, but now I want you to live a healthy lifestyle. And so we've talked about gratitude, testimonies, things that we can put in place in our lives that will allow us to live out emotionally, spiritually, healthy lifestyle. And so here this morning, I want us to wrap up in the last two verses. I want you to notice this, that Sometimes when we think it's hard, we want to say that that's the devil. But verse 5 and verse 6 talks about sowing with tears, going out weeping as they go out to do the work. It it reminds me of when I go out to run. Sometimes I'll be running and like the first mile or two is just awful. And and all I can think is I can't believe that it's this hard to run when I've run marathons. And I think that's kind of what these verses are getting at. They're going out to sow. They're going out to restore the land, right? It's been, in, it's been in captivity. The land is probably hard. It's going to take some, some time, some cycles, in, uh, some agricultural cycles in order for the ground to be restored to a place where it can produce a harvest. And so they know that on the front end, they're going to do a lot of hard work. And the whole time they're doing it, you know they're fighting in their minds. Like, I can't believe it's gotten this bad. 
why can't it just be easy? Wouldn't it be great if we could just hit a button and instantly be restored to a healthy place mentally? Instantly our thought cycles are, um, are beneficial instead of dragging us down. Instantly we are saying the right things and not saying the wrong things. It'd be great if there was an easy button, but there's not, right? And that's what the psalmist is getting at. We are going to sow. It is going to be hard work. There are seasons ahead of us that are not going to seem fruitful, but that's all part of being restored to health. And here's the beautiful promise. We will reap a harvest. Galatians chapter 5 says this, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to the family of believers. Paul writes in Galatians, basically what we see in Psalm 126, it's hard work to plant seed. But if we don't give up, we will reap a harvest. It will happen. We don't have to wonder about that. God will give the harvest. And so as we wrap up this mini series in Psalm 126, I just want to encourage you, especially you leaders that are listening, right? Keep plowing the field. Keep planting the seed, even if it costs you time, energy, even if it costs you your, your tears, plant anyway, because on the other side, there's going to be a harvest and it's going to be full of joy. You're going to bring back a harvest that you have waited for and expected, and you're going to be able to enjoy the fruit of it because you're restored to health. As always, I just want to say thank you for being a part of this podcast and especially these last five episodes, this little Restored to Health miniseries. It means so much to me and to Wendy. This has become such a passion of ours to see leaders lead from a place of health so that they can lead people to places of health. And if you want to be a part of this journey with us, I would say go to my, my blog site, pauljenkins.tv. You could sign up to um, notified when I write new stuff, post new podcast episodes. I'd love to have you come along the journey with us. And I want to remind you, and we're not going to get everything perfect, right? But if you'll keep saying yes, God will do the